Hey, it's me, Jersey, and today we've got a brief tutorial on using Adobe Illustrator to do sound effects. Uh, this I'm using uh, Illustrator CS4, but these techniques are ones that I've been using since, oh, geez, uh, Illustrator 7. So I'm not going to use anything here that's specific to Illustrator 4. Some of the menu options might change. I think the toolbar looks different in Illustrator 4, but all the tools are the same. So, uh, and I'll try to go as slow as possible to make sure that you get, you know, all can keep up. But hey, if you have any questions or uh, you want some clarification on these points, that's what the forums are for. Or you can email me, jerseydros at gmail.com. So here we have an Illustrator document. And I make a document that is the exact same size as the pages that I've completed. So I'll have a finished comics page. I take those measurements and I make an Illustrator document the same size. And you will notice in the layers palette, there is one layer there so far. That's, that's the default when you open up a Illustrator document. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place the artwork, the finished artwork, into the Illustrator document. And this can be a layered Photoshop file or it can be a flattened TIFF. It doesn't matter as long as it's the finished file without the lettering on it. So to place it, we go to File, Place, and we find the art file. There it is there. And we place it into the document. And we scoot it around so it meets up with the edges of the document. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Layers palette and I'm going to lock this layer. Why do I do that? Because I don't want to uh, accidentally click on the artwork and move it around while I'm making all my edits. Uh, as I've said before in past uh, tutorials, Illustrator is a object-oriented interface. Whatever you click on will be selected regardless of what layer you're on, unlike Photoshop. So I locked this layer, so now I cannot, I'm clicking and clicking and clicking, I cannot touch this artwork at all. The next thing I'm going to do is create uh, about three more layers over top. So just go down to my layers palette and over the new layer icon next to the trash can, I create three more layers. And we'll see why in a moment. So we're going to select layer two, that's the one we're going to begin working on, and we're going to zoom in on the last panel of the Switch Runners page that I did uh, with Mark Rudolph. And I'm going to zoom in on the last panel where uh, the villain Syndral is getting blasted by the hero Rondo. And we're going to put a sound effect in there. And in order to zoom, you can either use your zoom tool from the uh, toolbar or you can use the uh, command or control plus or minus keys to zoom in like so. That's control plus, control minus, or command minus on the Mac, command plus on the Mac, control on the PC. Now, if I want to scoot this artwork around and move to different parts, all I have to do is hold on my spacebar key and you'll see that the cursor changes to a hand. You click and hold with the hand and drag and you can move the artboard around. So now I'm zoomed in on the area that I want to put the sound effect. Let's start placing a sound effect, right? So we're going to grab the text tool and uh, that's just the T in the, uh, in the toolbar on the side. And we just click someplace, doesn't matter where just yet, just click on the artwork and you'll see a cursor pop up. And I'm not going to go into too much into theory of designing the sound in terms of picking what letters right now. I mean, I went into this extensively in uh, the big sound effect episode of Art and Story. I'm just going to use one of my go-tos, which is the TAM. Uh, hold down, caps lock, F-T-A-M. And now on my Illustrator, uh, it defaults to Myriad as far as a font, and it will look like that. Now you have a toolbar at the top to modify your fonts. Also, there's a tool uh, palette that you can get from uh, the window menu, and you can find the type tool in there, if I'm not mistaken. It's called character. Where is it? Uh, it's, but uh, you can find that in, in the, the, yeah, it is in the, the window menu. But, uh, but, but the nice thing about the newer versions of Illustrator is it puts the characters toolbar uh, mod modifiers at the top of the screen. So now I can select the text as long as I have my text tool on. And I can change the spelling, so F-T-A-A-M if I want. Uh, or I can just leave it F-T-A-M, which is what I'm going to do for this, the purposes of this demonstration. Now fonts. Um, I have my own fonts that I've built when I've... I've uh, advocated doing that for yourself if you have the wherewithal to do that. But if not, uh, you can use any font that is appropriate. And I'm going to use just a standard font called Impact, which is a really good uh, sound effect font. 
providing you modify it a little bit. And we're going to go through the modification process to make a stock font into a truly unique and idiosyncratic sound effect. So, okay, so there is the block text of my sound effect so far, FATAM. Now, when you have the text tool on, you can modify the, the spelling. As I said, you can change the type. But if you select your black arrow key, now I can stretch it and change the size. And if you hold down your shift key while you do this, it'll hold its aspect ratio. If you don't hold down the shift key, you can stretch it any way you want. At this point in the game, I always use the shift key. I don't do any like real modif modif uh, modification of the width or height of the uh, letters. Either one, I don't stretch it. Uh, either horizontally or vertically at this point, I try to keep it its uh, original aspect ratio. And I do those kinds of stretch edits later on. So now we've got the text. This is roughly where I'm going to put it. And I need to turn this text into outlines in order to start really doing the really cool stretch effects that you can do to make a really cool looking sound effect. And for that, we go up to the type menu at the top and select create outlines. And as you can see, the key command is shift command O, the letter O, or it should be a control command O on a Windows machine. But we select that, and now it has turned this sound effect into, or the, these letters into objects with points on them. If we zoom in, we can see these objects all have anchor points that we can modify. And if we use our white arrow key, or white arrow uh, tool, click off of it, just click on the edge, we can grab and stretch the letters any way we want just by points and undo, undo. Or we can do it by using our black arrow key, which will select the entire object. Right now, these letters are grouped into an object. And so if I click on it with the black arrow key and do any stretching, it's gonna stretch all of it. If I wanna select each individual letter, I have a couple options. I can use my white, uh, white arrow and click just on the center of one of the letters, and I can move it around. Or we can ungroup them. So we take our black arrow key, click on it so it says a group, and we're going to go to Object, Ungroup, or Shift, Command, G. And now if I use my black arrow key, I can click on each of these letters individually. And you can also drag and select over top of them to grab them all. So I'm gonna place them over in the area where I want them to be. And I'm going to start trying to, uh, as far as thought process goes, I want this to both represent the sound quality, the cadence, the resonance of the sound, but I also want it to be integrated into the art. So this is where I'm going to start modifying its shape uh, with all those things in mind. Now with the black arrow key, with all of these letters selected, if I hover over one of any of the corners, you can see that the arrow key turns into uh, two arrows pointing at uh, a curve. And if you grab when it's when it's the, uh, that when it turns into that icon, you can turn the lettering any way you want. And I'll turn it so that it's at a rough angle. Now I want to start messing around with the letter sizes to represent the quality of the sound. And for that, uh, we have a couple options. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make my A bigger because that's where the uh, real impact of the sound occurs. And I'm going to click on a corner so that it the cursor changes into two arrows with a straight line between them. Hold down my shift and option key and it will it'll, uh, transform the letter from the center point. I'm gonna make that A bigger, there we go. And I'm going to angle these letters. I want this sound to not be so straight, meaning uh, I want it to have a bit of a cadence, a rhythm, a rumbling to it. Right now, uh, it, when a sound effect in my mind is on a straight line, it comes across very quickly, very damn. But if I can change the angles of the letters and change the, their alignment as far as placement, now it's starting to take on a bit of a, a rhythmic quality, a cacophonous quality. And you got to be careful with uh, the, letter, the letters touching. Um, the, if, if they touch at a weird angle, it could make your sound effect unreadable. So I would never put the T right alongside of the A like that. I would angle it so that the bottom of the T intersects with the A like that. And then I'd have to modify my F. So we're both looking at sound quality, representing sound quality, but also thinking about aesthetics. And I'm going to angle that exclamation point and have it touch the bottom corner of the M. So now it's still readable but it has a little bit more of a sort of a cacophonous quality, a rhythmic quality to am, right? 
maybe even put another M in there, but I won't do that for now. Okay, so now we're going to mess with the shape of the letters. And there's a couple different ways to do this. I mean, shape in terms of the uh, distorting the letters somewhat. Uh, there's a lot of really neat ways to do this. I'm going to show you one of the cool ones that I like is you click on the letter you want to change the shape of. And over in your toolbar, if you hover over the icon, uh, it looks like a bounding box with a little black arrow next to it. And it's not letting it's not showing me what that what that tool is called exactly, but it's there in the toolbar and uh, right underneath the the distortion tool. Uh, but yeah, it just looks like a black a, a bounding box with black dots with a black arrow next to it. And what this does is if I click on a corner of the bounding box around the selected item and hold that corner and hit my command key, you'll see how the cursor changes into this grayed out arrow and I can just stretch and distort like so. See that? And I'll do this to give like perspective to the letters a little bit. Like the letters are emanating out of the explosion. And I'll grab the T and do the same thing. Grab that corner, hold on my command key, and point it inwards with a little bit of a perspective. And we can increase that perspective by grabbing the outer corners and stretching them out. So again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, pull down my... You, you need to use the black arrow key to select the letter, or while you have this, uh, this distortion box tool selected, you can hold down your command or control key to select letters. And I'm going to select the F. I'm going to grab that corner, click on it, hold down my command key afterwards, and stretch out... And now we're creating a sense of these letters emanating out of the explosion. Let's grab this corner and do that. There we go. And maybe grab this corner. This is something you can play with a little bit. Now, and, and then also, once I've done that, I can still turn the letters to emphasize that. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. And grab this. Exclamation point, and turn it a little bit like this, and now it's like a rounded sound emanating from the explosion. And again, this is, this is why I play with sound effects for hours when I'm really messing with them, really trying to get them to look perfect. Uh, I'm just, again, I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes to show you how this works. Okay, so I've got the letters essentially shaped the way I want. They're following an arc that I like. I'm going to turn that F just a little bit more. There we go. And now I want to give these letters the sense of, uh, of a resonance, like it's, 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 it's a pulsating sound. It's loud. It's very loud. This is why we put things on layers. So now I'm going to select everything with my black arrow key. I'm just going to drag and select all those letters. And over in the layers palette, you will notice that the object that has been selected is highlighted with a red dot in the layers palette, saying that on layer two, something is selected. You can just grab that and drag it to any layer you want. I'm going to take it to the topmost layer right now. And this is a very handy feature of Illustrator. This is one of the reasons I love working with it, is that it's really easy to move things from one layer to another in this fashion. Now, if I were, let's say I had uh, a couple other objects on here. I'm going to draw another box, another box, and another box. If I grab onto the layer four, if I go to my layers palette and click on layer four and click on that blue dot, it will select everything on that layer. See how everything got highlighted in blue with the corresponding color of that layer? So that's what you got to be careful of, is that I work with a lot of layers so that I can put the minimal amount of items on each layer. So I'm going to delete those squares. So now, all that's on layer 4 is the fatam. And so if I want to select that fatam, I can either drag and select, or I can just go to layers palette and click that area where that blue dot appears, and now it's selected everything that's on layer 4. Okay? So we're going to modify this. We're going to uh, give this a, a ringing resonance. And for that, there's a really neat technique that I use or that I've discovered uh, where you can make the lines wavy. Uh, and for that, we go up to object. Well, before we do that, actually, I'm going to give I'm going to create some outlines around this. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to put uh, some extra outlines around this to give it that ringing sensation. And for that, we're going to go to object path offset path. And what this is going to do is it's going to create another set of paths based on these initial paths, and it's going to offset them, make them either grow or shrink, depending on what we want. So after I click this, this dialog box appears, 
and we have the option to offset it by a certain number of pixels. And you can play with this because there's a lot of undos in Illustrator. Uh, positive values will increase the width of the path. It'll expand it out. Negative pixels will decrease the width. It will it'll make a smaller version of your letter. So I'm going to go for now with five pixels. And that's too big. It's much too big. When I hover over my A, you can see how big the outline is. I don't want it that big. So I'm going to undo. I'm going to go to Object, Path again, Offset Path. I'm going to use much smaller amounts. So let's go two pixels. It's a little bit better. Now, right now, all it is selected is the outlined paths, not the original letters. So if I go to my Layers palette and click that blue dot and drag it down one layer, I've moved the outline path down one layer. So if I were to uh, change the color of this outline so we can see it better, let's change it to a color that we can actually see on this color screen. Uh, we can see there's the outline and the original letters are on layer four. We can tell when we click on them because the outline turns blue corresponding with layer four and the paths underneath on the layer three are outlined in green. Quick note, Unlike when you create outlines with text, these offset paths are not joined. They are not grouped. So if you want to modify them all at once, if you want ease of clicking uh, of clicking on them to edit them, because like for instance, let's say I do, uh, let's uh, lock layer four just for purposes of this demonstration. If I were to drag to select the the outline that I've created and I wanted to edit that, if I'm not careful, see I didn't select the one around the letter F. So you can, when I often do, I group these outlined shapes so that it makes it easier to edit them later. And for that, you can just go to uh, Object Group or uh, Control or Command G. Okay, now, now again, I'm not worried about color at this stage. Color comes later. Right now, I'm worried about shape and size and angle. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one more outline. And this one's going to be a very small outline. So just selecting the outline that I've created, and again, I'm going to hide layer four just for a moment so you can see that it's a completed shape. It's not an actual outline. It's more like an expanded path around it. This comes in really handy when you want to do gradient effects, which I'll do in a moment. So I'm going to select these, this outline shape, and I'm going to Object, Path, Offset Path again. Now I'm going to do it one pixel, even smaller. And again, I'm going to go to layer three. Just the outline is selected right now, and I'm going to drag that down to layer two. And I'll change that color. Now it's starting to look, take shape as a sound effect, looking pretty good. Uh, and again, color is not important just yet. I'm just using these colors so you can see what I'm doing. So zooming in a little bit. Now I'm going to want to give this that ringing kind of quality. And for that, I want a wavy line around these letters. And the reason that I did these outline paths first is because we're going to run a filter on this stuff. And we'll go to Effect. And we will go to Distort and Transform. And we will go to Roughen. And this dialog box, box pops up. And if we click the preview icon, we can see what modifications we're doing to the sound effect. And we can increase the size of the distortion. And for this, I usually do a very small distortion. And we can increase the amount of detail, how many points we're adding to this. See how that changes? The more points I add, the more wavy the line gets. And we have the option to make the distortion smooth, or we can have them be hard. Well, I'm going to use a smooth distortion for this waviness. Okay. So now, after I hit OK, it's going to apply that, and I've got this ringing effect. Now, this is a little overly distorted, but maybe when we add some color to it, again, this is where a lot of undos are really handy. We add some color to these distortions, uh, it might look... A little bit clearer. So now I'm going to decide what colors these are going to be. And I'm not going to go too much into color theory, but I'm just going to show you the tools I use to get the colors that I want. So I'm going to use a sort of a yellow to orange gradation for the, for the middle, uh, the inner letters. And for that, I grab my gradient tool from the toolbar. And over in your palettes on the right of your screen, there's a gradient uh, menu box, palette, whatever you want to call it. And we can just grab some colors from our swatches, or we can actually modify these colors later. Uh, just drag one of the colors from the swatches down to this gradient bar, and you see how it changes. And we can grab a yellow and drag it down to the other end of the gradient bar, and now we have a yellow to orange gradient. We can change the type of gradient here from linear to radial. 
And now with my gradient tool still selected, I'm gonna grab the center point of the point of impact and drag out to the edge of the letters. And that creates that yellow to orange gradient effect. Now for the inner letters, again, remember I put all the these shapes on their own layer, so I can just select layer three, and now those letters are selected. You can repeat this with the eyedropper tool from the toolbar, and just once that's selected and you have your letter selected, hover over the, the item that you want to copy the color scheme from and click. And we can modify the gradient in the gradient palette here by just getting some darker colors. I'm gonna grab a red, put it in there, and I'm gonna grab orange as, to replace the yellow in that gradient, drop it there, and then grab my gradient tool and drag out from the point of impact to the edge. Okay, and now for the final outline on layer two, I'm just gonna choose a nice dark red color, a flat color, and now we have a fatam. Now there's another way to do this. I'm gonna back up real quick. I'm gonna do some undos to show you another way to do this that might look even better. Undo all that so we go back to the original letters. There we go. Now we're back to where we started with the letters on layer four. And now you can also do, you go to uh, create that, that wavy effect first and then do your outlines and you sometimes get a cleaner effect doing this. So I'm going to go to Effect, Distort and Transform, Roughen. Click my Preview icon, um, preview uh, button to make sure I can see what I'm about to do. Decrease the size to 2%, increase the detail, Let's decrease the size to 1% and use a lot more detail. Now I've got a pretty wavy line, smooth, okay. So now check this out. When I go to expand the path, it's going to replicate this waviness, give you a much cleaner look. So object, path, offset path, and let's do two pixels. And remember, this is now, the, uh, the offset path is now selected. We can drag that down to layer three in the layers palette and give it a color. And now the waviness matches a little bit more cleanly, doesn't it? And so I'm gonna grab layer three, just selecting it from the, the, the layer. Now, you, this is something you have to be careful of if you're doing a lot of sound effects on a page. If you, you just be cognizant of how much is on each layer, because sometimes you might actually have to break out the black arrow tool to select these things manually, holding the shift key down, clicking one after the other. Because uh, if there's other sound effects on this layer, you obviously can't just click layer three in the layers palette because you'll select everything that's on that layer, right? Okay, so now I'm going to offset the path one more time. Object, path, offset path, and we'll do one pixel. And we'll give that a different color. And now it's a much cleaner looking offset, and it has that waviness. And let's go ahead and just do the colors in it real quick so you can see what the final result is. So I'll go to my gradient tool. And in the gradient palette, I'm going to add an orange for the far end of the gradient, a yellow for the beginning of the gradient, and then making sure that the gradient is a radial gradient. I drag from the center point of the explosion to the outermost edge of the letter. There we go. And then selecting the, whoops, I made a mistake here. Check it out. When I did that offset path, I didn't drag them, that final offset path at one point, I didn't drag them down to their own layer. So when I just selected layer three, from the layers palette, I selected both offsets. So again, there's an example of why you should be careful with this, but that's not a big deal. All I have to do is take my black arrow key, select each of those outermost, outermost offsets, and then drag them in the layers palette down to layer two. We'll make that a dark red, and we'll make the other offset that we did on layer three a gradient by just clicking the gradient in the gradient palette or you could use the eyedropper like I showed you earlier. And we're going to modify it by adding some different colors. We'll add a darker red and an orange. And then using my gradient tool, click on the center point of the explosion, go to the outermost edge, and voila. We can add a little bit of extra emphasis to this if we want by clicking on the topmost letters, the source letters that we began our uh, Sound effect, ex sound effect exploration with, and we can put an outline around them. If we go to our color palette over on the right, you can see the inner color of the shape, but underneath that is the outline color. If we click on that, we can give it a dark red outline, and we can modify that in the stroke palette, which is 
often right next to your gradient palette, but you can find it in the windows, uh, the window menu. But okay, so I'm gonna go to my stroke and I'm gonna decrease the weight of the stroke down to 0.5 points. And there we go. So now it is a nice clearly defined sound effect that is integrated into the uh, page. Maybe I wanna do a little bit more modifying to it. This is the cool thing about Illustrator, once again, is I can grab it with the arrow tool. I can grab everything, even though these are all in different layers. I can just drag and select. Now I've selected everything on all layers. Go back to that tool with the, the bounding box, with the black dots around it and the little arrow next to it. Click that, and I can do even more uh, distorting of this by grabbing the topmost corner, clicking on it, holding my Command key, and stretching it even more. Let me zoom in so you can see this better. So I'm going to grab that top corner, click on it, hold down the command key, and then I can distort it with even more perspective. And it modifies everything. Grab the bottom corner, hold the command key, and can stretch it out like that. You can grab the corner while everything is selected and turn it, move it around. And you have a lot of flexibility to integrate your shapes and your sound effects into your page uh, aesthetically. And uh, yeah, you can continue to do outline upon outline with that uh, uh, offset path feature. Um, you can also, if I want the F to be over top of the T, you know, you can go to uh, object, arrange, bring to front. And now things are overlapping in a little bit more of a natural way instead of everything overlapping the letter that previously came before it. So like if I want the A to be absolutely on top of everything, go to object, arrange, bring to front there. So that's looking like a pretty decent sound effect to me. You can see it in the context of the page. We can zoom in and get a good look at it. You can easily import this into your Photoshop document by, by just selecting it and dragging it over to the Photoshop document or doing a, a simple copy and paste. So those are just some of the techniques that I use. I'm going to be doing more of these Illustrator lettering techniques uh, in the future uh, to explore some more, you know, different styles and different uh, methodologies of creating cool looking sound effects. But this is just a quick and dirty way of looking at it uh, from a beginner standpoint if you haven't used Illustrator before. So, okay, thanks for watching and thank you for subscribing to Art and Story Supreme. We couldn't do it without you. Uh, until next time, I've been Jersey Droves of jdroves.com and Jersey on the Twitters. Okay, bye. Thank you.